Well, hello there, and welcome back to Thomas Frank Explains. In this video, I'm gonna teach you about one of the most useful features in Notion, specifically in Notion's databases. This is a feature that you might already use, but you may not know exactly what you're doing with it, and you may not know about all of its different capabilities and limitations. That feature is called forcing functions. So what is a forcing function? Well, a forcing function is a filter applied to a database view in Notion that forces new rows to take on certain values in certain properties when they are added to that database view. Now, wake up. I know your eyes glazed over a little bit there. That is literally the simplest way to define what a forcing function is. But actually, if I just explain it to you through an example, it's actually very easy to understand. A forcing function basically forces a new row to take on a certain property. So I've got this little table here, which is a task table. And if we go over to this view of the task table called today, I have a linked database of that exact database where we have a single filter. This filter says that we only want to show rows where this do property, which is a date property, is today. So this is very useful for a task manager where I want to see only things that are due today. And what we can see here is one of these problems, or I guess tasks, which is due today here. But also what this filter is going to do is if I add a new row, like so, we have completely blank properties for everything except that do has been set to today. So that is what forcing functions do. They force new rows to have certain default values in certain properties. And this is incredibly powerful. You can use it to create views that will force certain dates to be applied, certain statuses to be applied. In fact, almost every property in Notion is able to take advantage of forcing functions except for four of them. And I'm gonna get to that in just a second. But first, I want to guide you through yet another example of how forcing functions can be incredibly useful. So if you've used Notion even a little bit, you've probably probably seen this other type of database view, which is called board view. And board view actually uses forcing functions inherently because it creates a Kanban board where the columns are defined by a property that's in your database. Usually this is going to be a select property. Sometimes it can be a multi-select property. It can be a person property, but that property is creating these columns, which means anytime we create a new row inside one of these columns like this, we are utilizing a forcing function to auto apply this doing tag to this select property. So if I just type test here, you're gonna be able to see that when we click into it, the status has been set to doing. So one thing that I love to do, and I do with almost any table that I create, is I use a forcing function to auto apply a default status property to whatever selects that I'm using here, because I don't want the status property to be empty in many cases. So what we could do, is if we're on the table here, where we're not using a board view so that forcing function isn't inherent, we can go over and we can create a filter. And if I add a filter here and I use the status property, I can select is and I can select a specific value. So maybe to do or doing or done. But what I can also do is simply click this little drop down here and change is to is not empty. And what this is gonna do is it will set a default status. So let's type test two here, but that default status is not a specific item that we picked. Sometimes we wanna just make sure that the status column isn't empty and that has a default value. So if I click into here, we're gonna see that the status has been set to to do, even though our filter criteria is not to do, it just says is not empty. So when you create a forcing function like this, how is Notion picking which of the selected values to actually apply when a new row is created. Well, you can probably guess it, it is simply the first one in the list, which means if we wanna have a default value, all we need to do is drag these around. And now that doing is the top one, if I create a new row, call it test three, it is going to automatically get the doing property. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to the middle here. So to do is number one. And if you've ever used ultimate tasks, which is my free but comprehensive task and project management template, link in the description down below, you will know that I use this for several different properties in the main tasks database. So here we have the today view in ultimate tasks. And if we click filter here, we have a lot of filters going on, but the top group you see here is uh, an example of this is not empty trick in action twice. We have a property called Kanban stage, and we have a property called priority. And because I have is not empty for both of them, anytime I create a new task in this inbox, like so, I'm going to get those default properties set. Now there are a lot of properties here in ultimate tasks, but you can see we have to do automatically applied to Kanban state, and we have medium automatically applied to priority. This is where that default trick can work really well. All you need to do is make sure medium is above high. So medium is always the one that is automatically applied, but 
because we are using is not empty, if I change that over to high later on, it's not going to leave our database view. That is the real power of using is not empty there. We're not going to force things to leave our database view that we want to see just because certain properties get changed, but we do have the ability to set a default property nonetheless. Now, earlier on in the video, I mentioned that you could use forcing functions for all of Notion's properties except for four. And I just realized I misspoke on that. The actual number is six, kind of seven. So let me explain. Most of the properties that you cannot really use forcing functions to change are down here in the advanced section. You cannot change formulas, you cannot change rollups, and you cannot change created time, created by, last edited time, last edited by. You can use them on relations, and I'll get to that in a second. These properties, other than relation, are really just read-only properties. They are showing you information that you can't really change or that you could change elsewhere indirectly in your workspace in the case of a rollup or in the case of a formula. The other property that's included here is files and media. And the reason that only kind of applies is that you can technically write a forcing function where you have a file property uh, not having anything in it being empty. But if you try to write a forcing function where it's not empty, where it actually has something in it, it's not going to work. And what do I mean by it's not going to work? Well, let me go ahead in here and create a filter that uses one of our properties that cannot be used for forcing functions. And I'm just going to pick a formula here. So days left is not empty. I could set any of these different values. It's not going to matter if I try to create a forcing function using a formula or again, any of those other properties that won't work. And what happens if I try to create a new row with this type of a forcing function applied is I get a blank new page. And it looks like the status column actually has had its to do tag applied. I believe that is an update notion is made. It used to be completely blank, but because we're trying to write to a read only property, this days left here, we don't get a new row in our database. You'll notice we don't have a new row right here. So we would have to literally set something uh, and I could set a due date like you know the seventh here and I can make this uh, titled test. And now we actually do have it there because days left is not empty. So if we want to be able to use forcing functions, we need to get these uh, filters that target read only properties out of our filter criteria for a specific view. We can use them if we simply want to filter by them. We wanna see what data inside of our database that already exists fits certain criteria. But if we want to utilize forcing functions, we need to make sure that our filters in a particular view are only targeting writable properties. So at this point, we have looked at how to automatically apply a due date using our today view in the do filter or date filter. We've looked at automatically applying a status tag. The next thing that I wanna cover is using a relation as a forcing function. And this unlocks a ton of different capabilities in Notion. And it's actually the driving force behind some of my more complex templates like Creator's Companion and Ultimate Tasks. And I think you're gonna find this very, very useful. So what if we have two different databases, one for our tasks and then one for say classes. We've got like chemistry, we've got anti-gravity dodgeball, we have biology, your typical high school classes, and then we have tags. And we wanna apply a class to each of our tasks here. Well, I can create a new task. I can just call this a you know, problem set two, and I can automatically apply a relation like you would. So let's just say this is gonna be a trigonometry problem here. But what if I wanted to have a task list inside of each of these classes where that relation would be automatically applied? Well, we can actually do that. So let's go into chemistry here and we can just open this page. So this is now the chemistry class page. Let me go ahead and make this a full width page. And if we look at the filter criteria for this linked database view of our task database, what we're gonna see is a filter that says where class contains chemistry. So class is our relation property, contains is one of our four different options here, and chemistry is the name of the page that we're looking at. Well, now I've got a forcing function which will automatically apply the chemistry class relation to anything created here. So now we have a pretty realistic looking second chemistry assignment here. And if we go back to our main task list, we are going to see that there along with its class relation. But you can make this even more powerful because as you can see over here, we have five different classes and each one, to go into biology and show you, has its own relation. So this filter is now filtering for the biology class. And you may be asking yourself, do I have to come in here and change the filter every single time I create a new class in this database, even if I'm using a database template. And in fact, you don't actually have to do that because Notion has this great feature called a self-referential filter. So if we expand this so I can get access to the three dot menu and go to our templates here, we're gonna see that we have something called class template. And this is what I've used to create all of these different classes. So if we go in here and click edit, what you're going to see is that the 
uh, linked database inside this class template is filtering to show itself. This is called a self-referential filter. And when we create an instance of this template, which is just a copy of the template uh, for a specific class, this is going to be updated to match the new name of the new page. So I will show you that in action, I'll create a new uh, class here, and we'll call this class a uh, gravity dodgeball. Because you got to cover all your bases with dodgeball. And I'm going to click class template to apply the template which brings in our linked database. And now if we look at the filter criteria, we see class contains gravity dodgeball. So this has been updated for us and we don't have to do any additional work. So those are forcing functions. They are one of the most powerful features that you're gonna find in Notion and they are very, very helpful for building database setups and often multi-database setups. There are some limitations in bugs. If you're using Notion's Web Clipper, it will not respect any forcing functions when bringing in Web Clipper content. So you can't like automatically set a status for that kind of stuff as far as I've tested. And if you do a CSV merge, which I do all the time, bringing in CSV files from Excel into Notion, those rows will also not respect forcing functions. Unfortunately, if anyone from Notion is watching this, consider this my vote to force those two different types of data coming in from external uh, ways to actually respect forcing functions. That would be very nice. I have not yet tested this with the API either, so I would love to know down in the comments below if you found any other limitations. I'm going to test those at some point, just haven't had time. But uh, when you're just manually building things and manually creating new rows and databases, using filters to create forcing functions is incredibly handy. Hopefully you found this video helpful. This is a bit more of an advanced topic than what I've been talking about recently on the channel. Recently I've been working through this series of beginner tutorials called Notion Fundamentals. If you want to check that out along with all the written content and templates and example files, you can go over to thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals or subscribe to this channel for more tutorials coming out all the time and template build guides, all kinds of stuff like that. Speaking of templates, over at thomasjfrank.com slash templates. I have free templates for task and project management, for note taking, for habit tracking, all kinds of cool stuff. And you can also learn about my premium template, Creators Companion, which is for content creators who want to take their game and organization to the next level. I'll have all that stuff down in the description below. And if you have questions, keep on scrolling past that description and ask your questions in the comment section or hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Tom Frankly over there and I am very responsive, especially to questions about Notion when I can answer them. So thanks as always for watching. I'll have a couple more videos on screen you can check out if you want to keep watching, keep learning about Notion. Otherwise, thanks as always for hanging out and I'll see you in the next video.